our wildlife pond. We were built in hibernaculum by UK amphibians and all things wildlife. Part 36. It's the 7th of October 2023. And here we take you on a walk around our wildlife pond in October. We've been in October. Uh, the weather is getting a lot more damper and it's um, creating a lot of fungi around the edges of the pond. Here's some below on the hibernaculum area. And here's some more around the edge of the hibernaculum. Some of the types of fungi growing around the edges of the pond are listed above. I've noticed since introducing the wood around the edges of the pond, this um, actually creates a lot of fungi to grow as well. Once it gets damp, like this, this area here in the picture, along the side of the wood, it's starting to, to grow more fungi. As you can see inside the pond, there's a lot more algae bloom as well. Even though it's getting colder, the weather is still creating quite a bit of algae bloom inside the pond. And there's some more fungi. Plants that are flowering at this time of year in October, um, around the edges of the pond is the Verbena benariensis here. Inside the pond, we have a pickerel plant that's flowering. You can just see it just in the picture at the back of the dragonfly perch. The purple loosestrife has gone over now and gone to seed. Still having a look in the plants around the edge of the pond we still have some baby common frogs knocking about if you clo have a close look here you can see this lovely common frog baby common frog which hopefully after a few more years once it's grown into an adult it'll come back and breed in our wildlife pond if you watched our previous videos it shows you how our, our common frogs breed in our pond this year Lay the frog spawn and all the tadpoles hatch and then the tadpoles morph into baby frogs. So if you, if you haven't seen our previous videos, we would suggest to go and search for them and you will see how the tadpoles develop from frog spawn in our wildlife pond. Not only have we got frogs in our wildlife pond, we also have toads in our wildlife pond too. Um, so we had some toad spawn this year and we also have plenty of newts as well in our wildlife pond. So check back at our previous videos guys. We have plenty of videos in our playlist section so go check them out as well guys because you won't be disappointed. Looking around the edge of the pond today we showed you earlier plenty of fungi growing where all the wood is. is. And here we can just spot a lovely, another little baby common frog that's morphed this year from the tadpoles. He's looking nice and big and healthy now. So he will be coming back hopefully in the next few years to breed in our amazing wildlife pond. If you haven't seen how we built our hibernaculum and our wildlife pond, check out for part one in our video section, all the stone area here is all our, all our hibernaculum we built when we built the full pond. So go check out for part one in our video section and it shows you how we built our wildlife pond and it's built in hibernaculum. So we're going to have a look around the garden today and we go to our, this is my favorite plant, the, the red dwarf buddleia. This attracts so many butterflies, you wouldn't believe it. And it also flowers a lot longer than the normal buddleias. 
on the dwarf buddleia today we have quite a few red admiral butterflies these are a really lovely stunning butterfly and it's nice to see how many the dwarf buddleia attracts to, to this plant You can see the red admiral butterflies love the nectar on the buddleia plant. Reason why the buddleia plant has got another name, butterfly bush, you can see why can't you? Just look how many butterflies it attracts to it, it's amazing. This is another type of a dwarf buddleia, this is the purple um, dwarf buddleia. Um, plant that I've got growing in my garden um, and there's plenty more red admiral butterflies on this plant too. It also doesn't attract um, just butterflies, it attracts plenty of insects and it attracts plenty of bees as well. So it's the perfect plant to have in your garden. So have a look for dwarf buddleia. Today we also had a real brilliant, amazing surprise. This is my compost bin in the garden and this is the first time I've ever seen a slow worm in my garden. Um, I've always wanted to attract them. I know we've got allotments nearby that has them. So this is probably where this one's come from, uh, the allotment that's only a few gardens away. Um, I've been told um, the owner there has plenty in his compost bins there so it's nice to see with creating our wildlife pond and its hibernaculum and creating plenty of compost bins in our garden we finally have attracted the first ever slow worm to our garden obviously I'm no expert with slow worms but I'm guessing this one possibly could be a male. Um, females have a black stripe down down them, um, which shows that they're females. Males normally have a few dots, a mottled effect to it, and I can't really see a black line down this. I can see the the, the dots to it, so I'm presuming this one's a male um, slow worm. So, these get often get mistaken as um, snakes, but I can guarantee this is definitely a slow worm, as slow worms are classed as reptiles. Um, so this is definitely not a snake, guys. So if you see something like this in your garden, don't be scared, because slow worms are really harmful and won't hurt you. All they do is eat slugs, which I'm loving finding this in my garden because I do have a big slug problem, um, especially around the pond, so hopefully it might do me a favour. It's the 15th of October 2023. The temperature outside is 11 degrees. It's slightly cloudy today. Looking here, this is the cuckoo flower that's starting to grow. The yarish plant is going over now. This plant here is um just trying to think of the name, what what it is um in fact, I know what it is, guys, but see if you can leave me a comment in the, um, the comment section below and tell me what plant you guys think it is. Uh, I planted a few of these around the edges of the pond this year, so hopefully next year they'll come up and flower um, real nice. It is a wild flower that I planted. If you look here, how the fungi has grown even more since we last showed you. This is the type of fungi here. Um, which we showed you in the picture there. 
Like I say, we're getting caught in the damp and the wood around the edge of the pond. This has created the fungi to start growing. Here's some more fungi growing around the edge of the high binaculum as well. So with the fungi growing, I would advise nobody to try eating this if it does grow around the edge of the pond because it's, it's poisonous. So if you have any animals or things like that that get near to the pond, I'd keep them away from it because you don't want them to eat it and end up poorly. Here's some more of Abena banariensis. This is um, the wild majoran flower, um, which has gone over and it's got the seed heads on it now. This, look in here, these are the seed heads of the purple loose dry flower. This branch sticking out here is our dragonfly perch and it actually works. Um, Joel Ashton gave us this idea and um, so we put it, the design in a pond and tried it out and it does work. This flower here is our red valerian plant that's growing around the garden and if you look closely enough on the fall, um, it's self-seeded, um, it, it does quite it does grow a lot and self-seed a lot around the garden. So it's it's a nice plant when it's in full bloom. Obviously it's going over now, but if you watch my previous videos um, this year, it shows you how well the plant does and flower um, in our garden and what insects and bees and things that it attracts to the garden. One in particular that it attracts is the hummingbird hawk moth. So, and we do have some videos on this, nectaring on that plant as well. So go check our old videos out, guys. Um, well, we're actually the videos this year. Um, so go check them out, guys, and it'll show you the hummingbird hawk moth nectaring on the red valerian plant. It's the 17th of October, 2023. Walking around the garden today, I show you how I collect some of the seeds, starting with this plant here. Um, this is the bird's foot trefoil plant and a lot's gone to seed. I don't take all the seeds, I leave some for the birds, but I like to trim some off and then keep some of the seeds for next year to grow more around the, the garden. Obviously some does fall off and self-seed naturally in the garden, but I like to take some of it off, keep it for next year, and then reseed it around the beds of the garden. So this here is bird's foot trefoil, and the bird's foot trefoil, if you watch my previous videos, it shows you it has a lovely yellow flower, um, which flowers around the edges of the pond. It also is the horse plant for the common blue butterfly as well, which is an amazing butterfly. Here's some more seeds that's gone over. Obviously I don't take all the seeds, I'll leave quite a few left for the birds and then for, for winter mainly and then after winter, once the birds have got other things to feed on, I'll get what's left over of the bird's foot trefoil. I'll put them in a little container like this and save them like this. This also is a red valerian plant. This does self-seed um, as well. It's got like little seeds that do actually blow away, a bit like um, our dandelions. If you look here, these are the seeds for the red valerian, which these blow all around the garden and um, do self-seed and st start growing quite vigorously. These are what they look like. If you're just blowing them like that, they'll just blow away like I say, like, like um, obviously dandelions. Um, 
That's how they, they blow around the garden. And here's some more, here, some more seeds. So I will gather a few of these and keep these. And, um, but normally, all I have to do is walk around the garden, dig up the new shoots from the, the red valerian and, and repot them if I want to put them in different areas in the garden. So that's, that's an easier way, really. Just let them grow in the garden and dig them up when I need them. Um, pass them on to friends and neighbours if they want them as well. Because these are really nice plant that grows out of the, the walls as well. This is a, our oxide daisy um, plant. Same again, I'll leave these seeds over winter for the birds, but then I will gather a few, just a few at the moment for, for next year, but I will leave a lot for the birds over winter. And then after winter, I'll gather what's left over of the oxide daisy flowers and reseed all these in pots and tubs around the garden. So this is a lovely flower which you'll have seen in my previous videos, how it flowers. It gets really high and attracts plenty of insects to the garden. And these are what the seeds look like. They just crumble up in your hand and you can just scatter them around if you want, just to help them self-seed around the garden. Here's a flower just starting to, to come out soon when the sun comes out. And this is what they look like, but these, these that you're looking at are going over a bit now. And these are the seed heads for the oxide daisy plant. It's the 18th of October 2023. Sun is out today. And what likes the sun in our wildlife pond is a lovely dragonfly. In fact, we've got two dragonflies in our pond today. And these are actually a breeding pair of dragonflies. If you look closely enough, you can see them attached together, breeding. And it's obviously that the female is the one at the back because if you look closely, she's laying her eggs in the water. So there will be plenty of dragonfly larvae in our wildlife pond coming this year and going into next year they do spend quite a while as larvae in the pond till they emerge as um, dragonflies later later on i've heard i think it's a, a year or two before they do form into dragonflies so how do you attract the dragonflies to your garden. To attract dragonflies to your garden, it's simple. You need to build a pond. And once you build a pond, you'll have a lovely female that comes along like this. Normally, they are not breeding together as they're laying the eggs, but a lovely female will come along and lay the eggs into the water like this. And then, obviously, once the eggs hatch, you will end up with plenty of dragonfly larvae. Obviously, they all don't survive because dragonfly larvae are quite vigorous eaters and they will eat their own larvae as well as all sorts that are in the pond. They will eat tadpoles, newts and things like that. So, you've got to be careful <laughs> with how many dragonfly larvae you do have in the pond because we want to have much wildlife after they've um, eaten everything else in there. It's really amazing to watch how the female is laying all her eggs. They do lay them in the mossy areas, in wet bark and things like that. And then the eggs hatch and then go into the water. So some top tips on how to attract dragonflies to your garden. First of all, you need to create a pond. You need to have plenty of plants as well, because what comes with plants? Plenty of insects. And insects are the main food source for dragonflies. Dragonflies eat plenty of insect, flies, butterflies, anything that they can grab hold of 
as they are really vicious and ferocious eaters. They're so fast they can grab anything in the air and eat them. This dragonfly here is obviously getting some heat off the sun and having a, a lovely rest. Once it gets its energy back, it will be off again, flying around the, the edges of the pond. Here's a lovely close-up view of the dragonfly. Obviously, they normally fly off when you get this close, but this one's really tired after breeding. So he's having a, a nice breather at the moment. So we're managing to get a nice close-up view of the dragonfly. Don't it just look stunning looking at it this close? So putting the wood around the edges of the pond, it does have its benefits. Showing here, the dragonfly is having a nice rest on it. Obviously, the dragonfly perch over the other side of the pond, they will use this to sit on top of that so they can keep a eye an eye on any predators um, coming around. Obviously, with it being eye up, it can see any insects it wants to eat. So that's what they use the dragonfly perch for. Here's another closer view of the dragonfly. How stunning. Does the dragonfly look this close? In the background, you can actually see behind the dragonfly is a newt eft as well. I don't know if you spotted that, guys. But just look how stunning this dragonfly looks and how close it's letting us get to it. Like, normally we wouldn't get this close because the, the only reason why we're getting that close to it is because We've just seen it breeding at the side of the pond and it will be exhausted at a minute. So it's getting plenty of rest before it does fly back up in the air again and go back to breeding. So walking around the edges of the pond if you remember me mentioning you about the dragonfly perch, here it is. You can just see it to the left hand side of the camera there. And here is the other dragonfly which was breeding. So one obviously is a male and one obviously is a female. So I wonder if you guys have an idea on which is the male and which is the female. Obviously in the early, in, in the video earlier, the female was on the back. So can you remember which color it was? The female, which was the obvious one to be laying the eggs. So this one's exhausted too. As I said um, before, we wouldn't normally get this close. It wouldn't let us get this close to it. The dragonfly would fly off. And normally it would be higher up on the dragonfly perch as well. Looking out for predators, which obviously this is a dragonfly perch here. It's going up and to the top. And normally they do get high up on this in the sun and then they can see any predators come into them so they can fly off. And they will also be watching out for any insects that they can feed on. And once they see an insect, they'll just fly off and go and eat it. So, obviously, I hope we've given you Quite a bit of information today guys on how to attract dragonflies to your pond you can just see the other one over there and obviously 
They will probably start to breed again quite soon once they've got all the energy back. Um, and looks like we're going to have plenty of dragonfly eggs and dragonfly larvae in our pond for next year, which will be amazing to have. And we wonder how many dragonflies we will have flying around our pond next year in the summertime. So I'm going to actually tell you guys what sex this um, dragonfly is. This dragonfly here is known as the common darter dragonfly. This one, the brown colour, this is actually the female. The one over the, the other side of the pond, the red colour, that's the male. So the brown one will have been the, the female one depositing the eggs in uh, the pond that we saw. So this is the female common data dragonfly and the one around the other side of the pond that red one is the male common data dragonfly So the red one here we're going to show you, this is the male common data dragonfly. The male's ones are, do have a reddish colour like this. So that's how you can tell the difference from a male common data dragonfly to a female common data dragonfly. So this is a male common data dragonfly and the one, the brown one over the other side of the pond is a female common data dragonfly. So there you have it guys, how to attract dragonflies to your garden. Create a pond, create plenty of wildflowers, and there you go. You can attract plenty of dragonflies. It's so easy as that, especially this type of dragonfly because they're very popular, the common data dragonfly. So thanks for watching part 36 everyone. Part 37 is coming out real soon. Keep and stay tuned, subscribe to our channel to see other episodes. Thanks for watching. Please give us a like and comment on all our videos. And don't forget to subscribe to see more amazing content like this by UK Amphibians and all things wildlife today.